All right, folks, here they are. This is a pretty good sized shed. We're in uh, what's called Gentilly, a little suburb in New Orleans. And um, we're going to open up the wall today from the outside. And looks like a mature colony. The homeowner, JC, he uh, had to clear some stuff. He did everything I asked him to do, folks. And he had to cut out a section of chain link fence. It was either going in from the outside or going from the inside. It's like built in workbenches and stuff like that. So this was the lesser of the evils. And uh, the neighbor's cool with everything. So I'm sure they're cool with everything because they probably want them to go. <laughs> so this is the deal. Uh, there's a lot of termite damage and rot. So uh, JC told me to go ahead and do what you need to do. So the easiest thing was to go ahead and cut the lap boards on the studs. I use the multi-tool with a little thin blade. It makes a really nice fast cut and not a lot of mess and uh, you can control the thing. So that's why I use that multi-tool. But um, so the cuts are made. Now we're just going to start at the bottom of the wall here. Start pulling our lap boards off until we expose the hive and then we'll uh, get to it. I'm going to try not to use the bee vac today unless we absolutely need it. So, uh, so far the bees have been chill. Uh, JC said he was clearing some stuff out the other day and, and he didn't have a smoker so uh, he kind of ticked them off a little bit but, but so far you know I've, I've smoked them and uh, they're behaving very nicely so hopefully uh, everything stays that way all right well here we go folks Nothing yet. Bees. No comb yet. Go.
Alright, we're trying to keep their attitude down. So far, so good. Hello, girls. So moving right along, folks. termite carton nest right there. What's that? That's the foremost and termite carton nest. We'll get that out in a minute. I'll show you what that is. How long you said you've been living here? Uh, about three years ago. You ever had any termite treatment? Yeah. Done? Huh? Uh, okay. For did, did they treat the shade? I assume so, but I don't know for a fact. Okay. There were a ton of termites in that, that old wood I brought out from in front of it. This stuff here? Yeah. yeah. Hello, girls. This is all full motion termite carton nests. See that? Doesn't look active, but it's a bad termite, folks. They are active. They are active. See them moving around there?
for the most part we got it exposed I think the top plate goes up just a little bit more so next thing we'll do is work on getting these combs out and the bees situated in our setup all right so the most intrusive part of this removal process is done now we just need to cut the combs and uh, shake the, the bees off the comb sections frame up some comb and hopefully we get our queen cager put her on the, in the setup by the way it's Friday the 13th folks This is going to go to JC. So there's a little pollen in there. It's not going to kill you. Unless you're allergic to pollen. Alright, there's JC. How you doing? Hey man, thanks for calling me out. Yeah, of course. Alright, they made some good honey. Huh? Oh yeah, it was good. <laughs> All right, buddy. Nope, that's not honeycomb. <laughs> that is a foremost and termite part nest. What that is. Pretty neat, actually, how they do that. But they'll actually take your wall material, utilize it, and mold it into this so where you don't have any studs or wall left and they just keep building and building and they'll push your walls out so that's a full motion termite part and that's they were brought over on some uh on a barge and some wood at the end of world war ii is what i'm told in algiers louisiana that's where they first showed up in louisiana anyway what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to square it off at the bottom, okay? So it sits on our frame a little bit nicer. So, the bottom of our frame, so we're going to make it kind of out here. So we did that right. Looks like this is brood comb. We're gonna put this in the in the box. It's honey. I'll, I'll let you know. I think we did that just about right. We can put another one right there. on the back side. Oh, that's so cool. But because there's brood on the back side, even though there's honey over here, yeah, you got to preserve it. You know, better just to give it to the bees. Yeah. Make sure you're not squinching anybody. That's a pretty good one. And they'll fill in all the empty spaces.
All right, folks. I'm, uh, I'm going to use the bee vac, and I'm going to tell you why. Well, a lot of bees, and I don't want to run them up. Uh, they're... <laughs> All right. Rattle trap. <clears throat> okay. So you can see them congregating here. If I keep on smoking them, they run them off the cones. There's a big gap above the top lap board and JC told me that the ceiling inside is finished. So I don't want them going in that space. Hey, they may try to get in there anyway, but we're going to go ahead and try to beat them off at the path and get their numbers way down. So we're going to we're going to use the BVAC. It just makes sense to do it. Uh, they didn't have that gap up there. Oh, I could do it without the BVAC. But uh, anyway, we're going to fire that thing up, get our numbers down and I'll show you the queen once I come across her. But uh, so far we have uh, one and a half frames of, of brood comb of the little honey framed up. So, all right, here we go.
ourselves a nice looking Italian looking queen. She's got that amber color, a little tiger stripe to it, a little black tip. You know, it's always a good thing when the bees are, are nice and gentle. Uh, you know, the, the wall was kind of a mess with all the termite damage and everything. JC is going to have some work on his hands. Uh, as you can see, uh, the shed definitely needs some repairs, but it's not the main structure. He's got the, the house under a termite contract and uh, probably the shed too. I'm sure he's going to give them a call to have them come out and do some uh, treatment on, on the shed. It's a pretty large building, actually. I, I know it didn't give you uh, much to look at, except for uh, what you saw in this video, but it's definitely something worth saving. So I'm sure JC is fully capable of doing the proper repairs. You know, wood can be repaired, you know. We're talking about two by fours and a little lap board, some plywood. So we're gonna go ahead and you know clean up the, the void space, and so, uh, JC can come in and, and do the repairs that he needs to conduct. Quite often, uh, I run across a situation like this where termites will uh, start chewing up the structure and, and they'll make little gaps, and, and the bees will find those gaps and move right in. You know, I mean, we're in southeast Louisiana. This is in, in New Orleans, in Tilly, like I said, a little suburb of New Orleans, and uh, we, we have such mild winters, so that you know, everything thrives here, folks. We're not just a sportsman's paradise, we're insect paradise as well. So, uh, that's why our bees do so well. We got our queen caged just in case she leaves. Uh, you know, typically, again, we, we normally keep her caged for about three days and then we'll go ahead and release her. And that usually does the trick into to keeping them uh, in the setup. You know, in case they decide, you know, hey, we don't really like this setup uh, and uh, they want to hightail it out of there, well, they pretty much have to come back because the queen's caged. So that's why we do that. All right, so the little deal I'm putting in place right now is called a universal entrance closure, and I got those from Better Bee. A while ago, they were like under two bucks back then. You know, you can use number eight hallway cloth, window screen. Now, I only close up entrances when I'm moving bees in the daytime. At nighttime, it's really not necessary unless you're, you know, you're parking somewhere where there's bright lights. Uh, if, like a gas station, you can even park in the shadows, and uh, that'll probably keep you out of trouble and keep them flying as much. Alright folks, got it done. Just to sum things up, it was a smart move to go ahead and use the, the BVAC because uh, like I said, there is an opening above the uh, top uh, lap board. I don't know why um, there's an opening up there, but there is an opening. <clears throat> and if we could have, if we would have just kept running the bees off the combs, they would have wound up in there. And I don't know what it looks like inside, but uh, if there's not an attic access, access and uh, it's like a belly crawl attic space only we would have had a time <laughs> getting those bees out of there so uh, why not be in the smart mood uh, to make <clears throat> to get that bee back out and uh, and uh, we we got all the bees out got all the comb out we got a nice uh, looking queen so uh, you can see some of them are landing on top of the catch box and I don't need to leave it here obviously uh, till dark so uh, one of the main reasons I, use, I don't use the BVAC on, on removals that I don't believe that I need the BVAC on is, is so that uh, every now and then I could give you some commentary. And that, really that's the only reason. This BVAC actually is pretty user friendly. This is the Colorado uh, Bee Rescue BVAC that Guy Shingleton out of Denver, Colorado uh, <coughs> makes. And uh, actually, <coughs> I actually helped him uh, test some of the original prototypes and I had some input on the design and stuff like that so we got to work together with it and, and I'm sure there were some other people involved with that but uh, uh, very user-friendly 
uh, BVAC, very bee friendly BVAC. We're gonna go ahead and set these up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put these in the truck. Uh, tonight we'll, we'll leave it like this. We'll actually uh, open the entrance up and, and let them come and go. And then uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll take the uh, top box off because uh, by uh, tomorrow morning they should have dropped down and covered brood and, and got to where the queen is. So hope y'all enjoyed this video. Another one from JP to B Man. Hope y'all having a great day because you know I am.